Hey everybody, it's me, Markov from Analog Sings, and today we're gonna to talk about this baby here, the Instax SQ6. Fuji's uh, flagship camera of this year, it shoots Instax Square, and we're gonna take a look at that camera. Because actually the year is going to an end, and a lot of you want to buy Christmas presents, and I kind of want to have all the cameras of this year in, in a pack, and we will make a video about that soon. So, let's head into that SQ6 review. So I tried to get a camera from Fuji just for rental or just to, to make a review and it was impossible for me. I tried it for like the last six months. I, I tried it at Fotokina, I tried it like in Austria and it's super complicated so I just had to buy one uh, even though I have more than enough instant cameras and I don't need another one. But let's give it a test and see what that camera is able to do. I haven't had it in my hands yet so let's see what we find in here. Manual that tells us how to open that box, blah 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 blah. The batteries, Fuji lanyard, the color gels. I really don't like the, the look of them. And in here we found find our SQ6 carbon steel. By the looks the camera looks really nice. I do have some film here already, we need the batteries. So the camera takes CR2 batteries. These are typical photographic batteries. You can get them in regular stores too. But I'm always like, I'm happy, I'm happy if there is a camera that could use the potential of regular AA or AAA batteries or has a lithium echo battery inside. That makes it a lot easier. On the side here, we have the panel to open for the batteries. They go in like this, both batteries inside. So let's turn the camera on. Can you see yourself? So that's the camera. It has a few cool functions. Like since the, the last review we did was on the One Step Plus from Polaroid Originals. And that's actually the, the direct competitor to this camera. It has this, like a lot of the same functions. It has double exposure, it has a macro lens, which is the portrait lens for the One Step Plus. It has landscape, it has lighten and darken and has automatic mode. There's also a timer in the back and a button to turn off the flash here. It still has no film. You can see that on that window in the back. That's what we're gonna change now. This camera shoots actually the Instax square film. The one with the rumored lawsuit, I don't know if that's still ongoing or not, um, but Fuji is producing cameras with it. Lomo is also producing cameras. And I already have the Lomo camera here. That That's the new version of the Square the Diana. We will take a closer look at this one next week or in two weeks. And yeah, so to load the camera, we just need our Instax film. That's how the camera looks inside. So let's put in the pack. It goes with the yellow stripe on top, like this. See that it's locked in place. Turn it on. So I'm always wondering by, by Fuji cameras if they check the first image by it themselves, but no, you need to take an image first, then it throws out the first frame. So this is dark slide actually of the of the film. As the buttons in the back here, we can switch between the modes. Automatic, that's macro. You will immediately see on the macro mode, the lens changes. Landscape, it goes back for wide angle shots, double exposure, light and darken. Automatic. The flash here in the back is like, when it's turned off, the light is showing up and the timer is active. That looks actually pretty simple. A few nice features of the camera, like for your selfies, you have a little mirror here in front, that's helpful. These are the light meters on the side. And the camera is pretty robust, it's actually not too big. You can pack it in your backpack without too much overhead. We're gonna head out to the museum today. Uh, there's a nice little exhibition in Vienna and I'm gonna try to do some outdoor shoots, uh, shoots shots, whatever. Also included in that package is like the filters for the strobe, these ones here and they advertise them on the package already and they look horrible. So if you want to have colored shots, try to build yourself a filter for the lens. That gives you a completely different image compared to these just flash thingies. They do nothing for my opinion, I don't like them. The output is something weird in between color mixture, like nothing you can actually use too much. Okay, so we grab everything. Uh, we're gonna take big camera here, uh, cause like the GoPro footage is okay, but I. I don't like grading the GoPro footage, so we're gonna stick with the big camera here and we're gonna head out. Some footage, try to make some test images. We have a few packs and let's see what we can do. So we are currently at Stadtpark in Vienna 
and it's beautiful here it's actually like old architecture everything and we're gonna try take some pictures with this baby here and let's see what we can do um, beautiful fall colors Polaroid originals film doesn't deliver too much on these colors let's see if we can get some better results with Fuji um, yeah let's see and I also want to try some double exposures because that's my thing let's try so I made my first test images and actually all of them are overexposed which is kind of annoying I mean yes the camera does a kind of good job but the images are all blurry could be my failure could be the camera's failure and they are all overexposed so I'm gonna change it a little bit let's try some macros or something like that and see how that works out but actually I don't know what's the problem at the moment like I did four pictures and all of them are kind of the same overexposure and kind of the same uh, blurriness like not that crispy sharp image I'm used to see on Instax film actually so I just took an image uh, with exposure like or mode set to darken let's see how that works out but I'm not sure if like we get something out of it so we are back in the studio and I had my chance to go out with the camera take some pictures unfortunately the light is like foggy grayish nothing special in Vienna at the moment so um, yeah I didn't have the best contrast of images and stuff like that I have to live with it it's like kind of five in the afternoon right now and it's already pitch black outside like I don't know how to manage to make daylight photos in winter time because like I get it out of the office at five and when I get out it's already dark so there's only weekends it's gonna be hard uh, we took a few images here with the camera to be honest with you guys I had some problems because maybe I'm a little like I think I don't need to read a manual or something like that so I didn't read the manual and I uh, didn't read that the camera's standard mode is between um, 0 0.5 meters and 2 meters that's the standard fo uh, focusing length and for la you need to set it to landscape to shoot wider images but coming to landscape that was actually one of the biggest problems for me um, I don't know if it's a problem with my camera or if it's like a standard problem with that SQ6 camera but on landscape mode yes it is the focus is a little bit further back it's like from two meters to infinity but I found out that images further away like or subjects further away than 20 meters start blurring again so they're not in focus so the focus is actually not on infinity it's somewhere at the 10 meter spectrum so let me show you um, one test shot out of my apartment and it was nice and foggy so the image came out pretty nice but let me see how close I can get that yes can you actually see how blurry the background is yes it's foggy but also the building in the background is not like sharp anymore it's out of focus and that's what annoys me a little bit on the camera also that you can't combine the modes with each other so like you can go to macro mode you can go to landscape mode you can go to portrait mode like mode like the selfie mode uh, but you can't actually um, combine darken and double exposure or darken and macro mode or lighten and macro mode so that was one of the biggest disadvantages for me that these modes so I think for a little more advanced photographer the camera is not the best choice it has an amazing sharpness on when you nail it like uh, I did that one macro shot with flash outside um, it's, it's a little bit bright can you see how damn sharp that image is so that's just like whoa it's like super sharp if you nail that but if you can't like uh, nail a focus like or like infinity sharpness it's kind of okay stupid in my opinion like it gives you a little disadvantage so if you're the person that just wants to shoot some instax film or just put some polaroids instant photos for memories and just um, like snapshots when you're on the road some la landscapes combined with people stuff like that and some macros so like the universal camera uh, but don't want to think about too much and don't want to go too creative I think that camera is a really great choice the price is amazing it's under 130 euros in, in here in, in Europe and it's in the States I think it's kind of the same price level so it's super cheap camera for the build quality it's really well made the lens is sharp um, the strobe works the viewfinder is a little irritating for me like being on the other side you have a tripod mount which yeah I think you don't need too much ISO 800 you're fine with that 
So for that purpose, it's a really good camera. But if you are a little bit more advanced and you want to do some more stuff and, and like have a little bit more control, you're really limited with that camera. And that's um, the sad point. Because I like the design, I like the, the how modular it is, how small, when you put it in your pocket, it's not too big. You could actually carry it around a little e easily. And it gives you great results. But a few downsides, like uh, you, you, for darkening and brightening the images, you would need to have your own LD filter set to darken and lighten, either the lens or the uh, exposure meter. These are things that kind of annoy me, to be honest. So for sure the camera is a good pre Christmas present for somebody that just wants to start out. And it's good because Instax film is cheaper than Polaroid film, so you're a little bit faster in development and shooting Instax. It's a little bit more forgiving and um, the film is stable, so that's a good point. But yeah, you can't do any manipulation with insect film afterwards, after you shot the image, mostly. Yeah, you can do the cutting stuff, but like uh, the chemical emulsion lift doesn't work or transparency. I haven't done that with insect film. So yeah, the camera is great, but it has its disadvantages. And yes, for that focusing thing, if you have an SQ6 already and you're watching the video, please tell me if you have the same problem. Like I, I don't know if it's a problem with my camera or a general problem with the, uh, with the camera. But let me know in the comments below if you have the same issue. So I think that's it. 